Hi, um, welcome to my first demonstration of a process of uh, taking a, uh, uh, a raw image or a, uh, a straight photograph uh, without any uh, on-camera enhancements made to it. Um, so taking a digital negative and adding enhancements such as clarity, uh, saturation, exposure, contrast. Um, the reason why um, a lot of pictures um, you take, you don't have the privilege or the um, the time or the luck to be there when the lighting's just right. Sometimes circumstances don't let you. There are all sorts of reasons, and you can get a a good image, but it may uh, it may benefit from a little post production. Um, the one I picked today is is an image I took during a storm chase last year. Uh, those that view this that have been on the storm chase will recognize it. It was uh, it was a storm a supercell coming straight towards us. Um, what you can see pretty much there where the lightning is coming out is called the anvil. Um, in simplistic terms is the powerhouse. So it's doing a, a back to the future moment and delivering gigawatts of energy um, on a small area of the ground. Uh, we were at the side of the road, so we didn't have a lot of time. Um, so we had to set up, captured the image, which was uh, which was good. It was very kind to me, um, and then uh, we left. And the reason we left was um, somewhere in the five to ten minutes after we uh, we were there, um, that lightning bolt move forward to roughly where we were standing so we would have been a little frazzled not a wise move so do I like the picture yes I like the picture it's got nice color um, the sky is reasonably interesting there it's not too flat the foreground is a little dull and it has some artifacts in it and some distractions um, so we will be getting rid of those you'll see those I go through what I do with them First thing I always do though is uh, in Lightroom, uh, very nifty little tool, this is Lightroom 4, uh, it's in most versions of Lightroom, I couldn't tell you exactly which ones, I know it's in 3, I'm not sure about 2, but is enable profile connect correction. This basically just allows the, the software to adjust for any uh, known distortions or abnormalities within the glass of your lens. Uh, useful just brings it out so you can see it work and I turn it off and I turn it on it will just subtly change the picture step number one complete step number two is I will go in and crop as we can see using the mouse pointer there is some garbage this was on the sensor of the camera um, unfortunately I didn't have a chance to clean it down here there's probably a couple of little rain spots um, the electricity sign of death because there's an underground cable there just to add insult to injury um, and then we've got some farm buildings and some power poles um, you can see the power pole is leaning over that's probably a perspective issue uh, but these little things are just distractions in my view i start though with everything is a crop for those who are quite comfortable with the rule of thirds the lightning did play ball um, and it put itself nicely in the bottom right hand corner there at one of the junctions um, but the rest of the sky there's a bit too much grey over here there's a bit too much lighter so I'm just going to keep the proportions in this case but crop in uh, I'm not going to crop in too far because I actually quite like the fact that the hill dips round all I'm doing really is bringing the image in putting that more more on the join um, and just removing some of the excess grey which uh, albeit is nice is not necessarily perfect then the last thing I will do is I will just check that it's it's pretty much straight assuming my eyes can deal with that I think that's about there so I'm happy with that so I'll just select done so we've now cropped um, first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to venture out of Lightroom um, I could use the, uh, the the healing brush to remove the artifacts, but actually Photoshop has a has a slightly better tool, um, which I will go with. So we'll take the step. But we're going to edit in Photoshop. Um, this is Lightroom 4. <coughs> Pardon me. 
and the camera roll plug-in version for this is actually 7 but they haven't released 7 for Photoshop yet um, I have a feeling you probably won't see that till uh, Photoshop uh, CS6 comes out I'm not sure so we're going to render using Lightroom all that will do is save the image off as a TIFF file and send it up to Adobe with my corrections that I've made already nothing uh, nothing too, too too difficult there from here and wait I will select Photoshop hopefully it will then fire up and I will get my image there we are and all I'm going to use here is the healing brush tool um, so to help out I'm going to zoom in uh, so we can see what what exactly we're doing uh, for this one first things first is there are some little errors reduce the size of the brush you can do so with the, the square bracket keys uh, and the wonderful thing is what I'm doing is a healing brush with content aware running um, and what it will do is it will try and match the background for everything I remove so I'll try and get rid of that let's get rid of the farm machinery I'll just bring the colour back in there um, some of those posts I'll get rid of that post I'll focus on the background first. The little ones I'm not too worried, but there are some very simple ones. I just, I'll just dispatch them. You know. So I'm not too worried about the cables because it is actually quite small what I'm, I'm removing here. And that one, I don't know whether it's tilted or whether it's a perspective issue. Um, and then what I'm going to do, just for my own personal taste, I'm going to remove that little building in there. Um, and then finally we're going to remove the buried cable sign uh, and we just come down and we'll remove that Oop, just a bit and there we go <coughs> so zoom out just make sure I've got everything I want um, yep that's fine all the all the little all the major distractions um, I've got rid of so I just hit exit and save and when I head back to Lightroom it will load up my new image and there we are so what we do now first thing I'll do I'm just going to play with the exposure I'm going to bring it down a bit because it'll just bring out the lightning increase a bit of the contrast bring the saturation and the clarity up a fraction not much and vibrant just plays to, to do that because it, it just makes the lightning stand out um, I will adjust the tone later and likewise sharpening and noise so that's in essence all I'm going to do in generic terms what I'm now going to do is more specific and the first thing I'm going to do is the graduated filter brush using exposure I'm going to reduce the exposure down probably about a stop and a third and I'm just going to place my cursor on there and drag it upwards now the wonderful thing about Photoshop, it's all non-destructive. So I can adjust. It's a bit too dark. I can bring that up and, and just adjust. So all I'm adjusting for here is the clouds. I'm going to bring the clarity up a bit. It will pop, make the lightning pop out. A bit of saturation to bring the colours um, and bring the highlights up. So, mead and moody sky, uh, which is what I was looking for okay so that's the first one so that as you'll note has darkened the entire image so not quite what I was planning let's just bring that up but I will fix that right now so I'm going to use a new brush again staying on exposure and this time I'm going to come up from the bottom the first thing I'm going to do is actually bring the exposure up quite considerably because I want this to be nice and bright so that it looks like the sun's shining on it. Straighten out the brush, incredibly fiddly, and then move up the graduation till it just hits the bottom of that set, and then just work on straightening it. So I've done that. What I'm also going to do is bring the clarity up sharpen it up and, and, and give it a bit more definition bring the saturation up and I'm also going to warm it up 
quite simply, it's just going to make it look like the sun's falling on it, more so than anything else. Okay. Okay, so that's trick number three. My final little edit on this bit. I'm going to use another brush, another graduated filter, and I'm just going to bring it in in the corner here. Okay, move it across, and this is the fiddly bit. Try and move it up. And what I'm trying to do is just give a little bit of definition to the bottom edge so it looks like the sun's actually passing and shining over the ground. Okay, and I'm going to just touch a saturation, touch a clarity, um, and a little bit more exposure, and not much. So I want to maintain definition, but I want to just focus my eyes on that. So what I've done, in essence, is I've actually increased the depth in this, in this photograph. So I'm bringing your, your eye line in from the front, all the way across this field, which now looks to a degree like the sun shining on it, hitting the hills where it's gone dark and moody, leading up into the nice bright lightning strike, which takes you into the interesting skies. And from there, with it, in fact it's slightly underexposed now, you can actually start to pick out the, the, the lightning travelling through the clouds down here and out through the back there. So the only last thing I would do on this in a more specific area is use the adjustment brush, which allows me to, to get a bit closer in and a bit more selective uh, and bring the exposure up by about half a stop. And I'm just going to literally paint some exposure back into that hill. Rough doesn't need to be perfect. And all I'm doing is just adding more depth just to that part of the image. All there just to make it a slightly more pleasing uh, pleasing picture to look at. So, generally speaking, I'm done. So, the last thing I will do, I'm going to just give it a bit of punch with the tone curve. So, just a generic S curve will do nothing too spectacular, I don't want to do too much. Uh, and then finally, I'm coming down to my sharpness, let's move over to something a little more. And I haven't played too much, I've not cropped too hard, so I'll bring some noise reduction in, don't need a lot, and also bring some sharpening in. Uh, again, won't need a lot, and just turn the noise reduction down a fraction and the detail. I'll bring some of the detail back in, take some of the colour noise out. And there we have it. So, that's the, the finished product. Uh, I'll just turn the lights out so we can see it. Uh, there's the, the finished product, and now compared side by side, it's a purely personal preference, but in this case, you know, I'm happy with the one on the left, but it is lacking a little something. It doesn't pull you into the picture and doesn't doesn't grip. Um, whereas on the other, the one on the right, to me, actually makes it uh, just that much more impactive and gives a sense of presence to the storm, which trust me was there. But sometimes the uh, the digital range of modern cameras can't see it. Um, so there we are. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was educational. If not, don't worry. Um, I will produce some more whether you watch them or not um, is up to you I enjoyed doing it thanks very much